Well, hello and welcome. I'm Pastor Kim Pilmore, and I'll be your training host for this segment of Back to the Basics. Um, we're studying Back to the Basics, the Holy Spirit. Can we prove it? Right? In this lesson, we're going to begin to look at the accounts in the book of Acts that describes believers being filled with the Holy Spirit, and then what happens after that. So we're going to do this because this is going to help us establish these truths, you know, in our hearts. And so let's begin to look at the accounts in the book of Acts that describe believers being filled with the Holy Ghost and, and what happened uh, when they were baptized in the Holy Spirit. You know, glory to God. So can we prove, uh, as we're looking at these scriptures, God's pattern in every account of the believers being filled with the Holy Spirit? Can we prove it? Um, you know, can we prove that it shows that when they were speaking in other tongues that they were magnifying and praising and uh, giving thanksgiving to God? That's the question we're going to answer, and I believe you're going to see that it's yes. All right? So, this will give us a great confirmation, seeing this in the Word of God, that as modern believers, filled with the Holy Spirit, that God wants us to experience this great gift. Glory to God. Let's take a look at Acts 2, 4 through uh, 11 and the I'll be reading out of the New Living Translation and everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability and everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them the ability. Okay, I read it twice in a row. And at that time, there were devout Jews. Devout. I say it South Texas style. De devout. Devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they heard the loud noise, everyone came running. And they were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the believers. And they were completely amazed. And they said, how can this be? They exclaimed. These people are from Galilee. And yet we hear them speaking in our own native languages. Here we are. And I'm not going to read all those things out there. Blah, blah in Egypt and the area of Libya around uh, Cyrene. I don't know if that's right visitors from Rome and yet we hear them speaking in our own native languages both Jews and converts to Judaism Cretans and A Arabs and we hear all these people speaking in our own languages about the wonderful things that God has done awesome so when the early believers were filled with the spirit the Holy Spirit, what was the first thing that happened here? What was the first thing that happened? Well, they started speaking in other languages. The King James uses the word in other tongues, you know. What enabled them to speak in other tongues? The scripture says, the Bible says the Holy Spirit did. The Holy Spirit did. And what languages did the Holy Spirit help them speak? The Holy Spirit helped them speak languages that were current and, and modern in that time. You know, languages that they didn't know. It was literally like the King James says, an unknown tongue. And so I think that's super cool. So when people heard them speaking in tongues, what were they saying? What did we talk about? We were trying to prove in the Bible. Um, we were talking about the proving that when they're speaking in other tongues that people were, that they pray, praise, and magnify God. Well, the people heard them speaking in tongues and it says that we heard them speaking in our own languages about the wonderful things that God has done. That's totally awesome. Let's take a look here at Acts 9, 1 through 18. 1 through 18. Somehow I always draw the lot where I get all the scriptures to read. <laughs> and be, knowing that uh, I struggled just like some folks, some of you may, you know, reading all the, the words from way back then, you know. <laughs> 
So meanwhile, Saul was uttering threats with every breath and was eager to kill the Lord's followers. So he went to the high priest. Now a little note here, Saul eventually gets renamed to Paul, the apostle Paul, who wrote a whole bunch of the New Testament. So we're talking about Saul. And uh, he requested letters addressed to the synagogues in Damascus, asking for their cooperation in the arrest of any followers of the way he found there. He wanted to bring them, both men and women, back to Jerusalem in chains. Man, that sounds like a gruesome person. You know, it's almost like someone going out there and just roping people up, putting chains on them, dragging them all back, you know. And I, yeah, like a bounty hunter, someone said. I like that. A bounty hunter for the Christians. And he was approaching Damascus on this mission. So he's on his way to be the bounty hunter and put them all in chains and take them back for bad things to happen to them. So then suddenly it says, a light from heaven suddenly shone down around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Can you imagine that? You're on your way like the bounty hunter to go get someone that you think's doing, you know, needs to be caught. And all of a sudden, light surrounds you. And it just basically, you're in fear and trembling and you just fall flat to the ground. And then on top of it, you hear the voice say like, Kim, Kim, why are you persecuting me? I'd be like, oh my word. So what Saul does is he says, who are you, Lord? Saul asked, and the voice replied, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. Man, that'd be a wake-up call for me. I don't know about you. <laughs> now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. So the men with Saul stood speechless. I love that. They stood there speechless. I would too if I'm sitting there and a light suddenly shines down on Pastor Mike and starts booming and speaking to him. Man, I would be standing there speechless too. Because it says, for they heard the sound of someone's voice, but saw nobody. It was like the invisible man speaking to him, but it was Jesus. So Saul picked himself off the ground, but when he opened his eyes, guess what? He was blind. So this experience went beyond just being in fear and trembling when he falls on the ground and hearing the booming voice telling him, hey, you're persecuting me, this is Jesus. He can't see when he gets up. I, that, my, that would scare the bejeebies out of me. I don't know about you. <laughs> so... It says, Paul picked himself up, okay, eyes, he was blind. So his companions led him by the hand to um, Damascus. And he remained there blind for three days and did not eat or drink. I may not have eaten or drinking either had I been, suddenly went blind after this booming Jesus spoke to me says, now there was a believer in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord spoke to him in a vision and calling, Ananias. And he said, yes, Lord, he replied. The Lord said, go over to Straight Street to the house of Judas. When you get there, ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul. I mean, mind you, this man's been hunting him like a bounty hunter and putting him in chains. And he's telling him to go over there and, and talk look for Saul he says he is praying to me right now I have shown him a vision of a man named Ananias coming in and laying hands on him so he can see again but Lord exclaimed Ananias this is what I'd have been saying I've heard many people talk about the terrible things this man has done to the believers in Jerusalem and he Arthur and he is authorized by the leading priest to arrest everyone who calls up on your name I love this but the Lord said go for Saul is my chosen instrument to take my message to the Gentiles and to kings as well as to the people of Israel isn't that cool that God had a plan for this man who was a bounty hunter look hunting after Christians and putting them in chains and dragging them back and it says, I will show him how he must suffer for my name's sake. 
And as if you continue reading the word, you'll see Paul really did suffer for the, the name of Christ. So in verse 17, it says, So Ananias went and found Saul. He laid his hands on him and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road has sent me so that you might regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Instantly, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he regained his sight. Then he got up and was baptized. All right. Now, this is a dynamic account of, of Saul being born of the Spirit and subsequently being filled with the Holy Spirit. Let's see what happened. So um, in verse 3 through 6, Saul, who became the Apostle Paul, had a dry, dramatic conversion. And I, I, I'd agree that's dramatic when he was born of the Spirit. All right check this out how do we know that he had this conversion experience what did he call Jesus in these verses he called him Lord all right Jesus is Lord if you'll believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus was raised from the dead that he Jesus is Lord you know that's his conversion experience so in verses 17 through 18, God used Ananias to lay hands on Saul so that he could receive and be filled with the Holy Spirit. What happened to Saul when he was filled with the Holy Spirit? We see scales falling off of his eyes, you know, and he can see, but we don't see any evidence of him speaking in other languages at this point in time, do we? Right? But when we read Paul's letter to the uh, Corinthians, in 1 Corinthians 14 through 18, it says, I thank God that I speak in tongues more than any of you all. Is that cool or what? But it says, but being in a church meeting, I would rather speak five understandable words to help others and 10,000 words in an unknown language. So according to this scripture here, did Paul the possible, the possible, <laughs> it's like Kim possible. Did Paul the possible, <laughs> stumbling over my words here. Did Paul the apostle, lost my place here who is also known as Saul speak in tongues well yes according to the Bible according to the word of God he did how often it says more than y'all but it says you all <laughs> so the apostle Paul spoke in tongues privately more than anyone else in our next lesson, we will continue to look at examples on what happened when people in the Bible were filled with the Holy Spirit. So this concludes this lesson on back to the basics, the Holy Spirit. Can we prove it? Yes. I'm Pastor Kim Pilmore, and thank you for watching. <laughs>